So as you all can tell, I'm having an issue here. Um, I had to do a bunch of transporting with my equipment over the weekend to a job um, back and forth and everything was fine. I didn't have any issues, but um, you know, I was pretty wore out at the end of the day. So um, the last piece I had was my, my little 1023. So I just left it on the trailer and um, it sat for, for about a day before I got to unloading it. And I went to move the trailer to, to go park it and unload it. And this um, left rear uh, wheel was locked up. It was skipping a little bit and now it's just completely seized. It's not, it's not rolling it at all. Um, not sure what the problem is yet. And that's what we're gonna, that's what we're gonna get after here. Um, you know, when I bought the Mini, I towed it, uh, I don't know the mileage exactly. It was about three hours and no issues there either. And, you know, I inspected the, the tires and the, you know, it's got the easy lube axles, so I greased everything up. Um, and everything's been working good, but you know, you can also sort of tell here that the inside of the tread is completely bald. So I'm definitely having some kind of issue here. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and tear this apart and see what we get into. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, jack this thing up and put it on stands. Now, I, the, what I like to do is just put it on stands on all four corners. Even if I'm only working on one wheel, I'll do all four corners. That way it's not all uh, tipsy and shaky. So, um, let me show you how to do that. All right, so I have jack stands under both back corners, but as you can see, still a little tipsy because it's only got a single stand jack in the front. So we're gonna put stands over the front, under the front corners too. That way it's nice and solid. All right, now as you guys can see, nice and solid. It's not moving at all. So I got stands under the frame there. And after I lowered it down onto the stands, just touch that jack back off just for safety. All right, so let's, uh, let's get this wheel off and see what we're looking at. See that? That wasn't like that before last weekend. Alright, so on this style here, I don't know about any other trailer axles, but in order to get the drum off, you gotta take the whole hub assembly apart, the bearings out. So um, let's let's get that done. All right, so some of the tools you need to have on hand to do this is just a, a little screwdriver, ball peen hammer, any any hammer, a punch, chisel, brake parts cleaner, roll of paper towels, and to pop off the uh, center cap, I just use a dead blow hammer.
So the first thing we need to do is find the keeper for the castle nut or bearing nut. Flatten that out down into the uh, keyway so we can back off the bearing nut. Now that we got the keeper out of the way, we can go ahead and start backing this nut off. Even after backing off that nut, it still won't free up. Got that spacer out of there. Um, ended up getting a 90 degree angle pick behind it. So these brakes feel like they might be locked up. It's not give, having any give. So we're gonna back them off here. Pull this plug out. There should be a adjustment knob inside here. Yeah, there's like a uh, little sprocket type jobby inside there. I don't know if you can see it or not. So. Just, uh, there's a special tool for this. Fortunately, I don't, I don't have one, so. Use a screwdriver. That's not moving. Of course. Of course it's not moving. Let's try plan B.
is the culprit. The uh, material separated from the pad or from the shoe. So that'll uh, that'll cause that. It gets bound up in there, and this stuff here is yeah, this stuff here is not doing too well so now the problem I guess I'm gonna have here is figuring out how to go about ordering replacement parts um, you know I doubt I can go to the local parts store and say that I need you know brake shoes and hardware for a 2003 or whatever this is Appalachian 10,000 pound trailer um, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of research here get the parts coming and we'll get all this cleaned up put it back together uh, I'm gonna inspect the bearing here but I'm probably just gonna go ahead and do all four all four uh, brake assemblies here so um, pretty neat to get kind of an understanding for how these electric brakes work now I've never researched I've never you know even attempted to learn how these work they just work as far as I knew um, but you know the, the wires are running to this puck here and if I was to make a educated guess I would say when power is applied to the brakes, it generalizes this puck, which acts as what I would imagine to be a magnet. At least, I mean, I don't know. It looks like it's probably a magnet and it catches here on the face. And when it catches, you know, it either, I guess whenever the, whenever it's going forward, it would grab the drum and push backwards, which in turn pushes out on the pad or on the shoe, which applies the braking force to the ID of the drum there. And then in reverse, it pushes the back shoe. But I'm fairly certain that it should be separating both, put you know, pushing out both shoes. So maybe, maybe the hardware's buggered up or something here. I don't know, maybe it does only use one shoe. Or maybe it's just because there's no pressure against it, so... It's probably what it is. Alright, well, let's get some parts and I'm gonna have to get a couple of new tires. All right guys, so what I have going on here is I got the parts ordered for this axle. Um, you don't just buy parts. You don't buy shoes and hardware. You buy this whole assembly with the backing plate and everything. And the way you do that, well, I'll show you that later. But, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff off the, back, the rear axle, uh, get this, brake assembly off, go over to the other side, get that wheel and drum and hub assembly and all the brakes off of that. And then I'm also going to take the front wheels off. I got two new tires coming for the back axle since those were war. These tires are pretty good yet. These are probably 50%. 
uh, maybe a little better. So what I'm going to do is actually going to put these on the back axle and put the new tires on the front axle just in case there's something funny going on that I didn't catch and I wear out another set of tires I'm not wearing out my new ones I'm going to wear out these 50% tires um, and also these have low D tires on them um, or D rated tires so I bought E rated tires 10 ply tires because these are 6,000 pound axles so um, even the E rated doesn't quite get you there it's like 2,900 pounds I think but it's better than this these are like 20 2,500 pound tires the low D um, so I got E rated to put on the front here and then when these wear out I'll get a set of E rated tires for the back axle too and while I have these off, I'm going to go ahead and paint these wheels again. I did this uh, probably three years ago, and I'm not painting them white again. I'm just going to paint them black because the white doesn't last. All right, so to get this brake assembly off, there's five bolts. The nut side is on the outside here, so we're going to take these five bolts out, and that whole assembly should come right off. Of course, they're not all going to be easy. Soak these down a little bit with some penetrating oil. What are you doing, diesel dog? Huh? There's a puppy. Huh? My buddy. Uh, penetrating oil? Nope, right here. Yep. Why are you working on that? My trailer? Yeah. Because it's broke. How? Brake shoe. Broke. Heck. Sweet Pea gonna come say hi to? What? 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 YouTube? Hi! <laughs> I'm helping my daddy work today. <laughs> You're silly. I'm going away now. <laughs> We got those out and see if I just give it a couple whacks with a hammer here. And that did it. So we get that out. And then we got the wiring back here. For now I'm just gonna Cut it off right 
Came off a little nicer. So when you get your drum and hub assembly off the trailer, you're going to need to pull the seal out and then the, the back bearing. So let's go ahead and do that. If you have a seal puller, it's definitely better to pull that seal out, get the cone out, the bearing cone out, and then tap the outer race out like I'm doing now. Um, but I, I, I don't want to fight that seal, so I'm just I'm replacing it all. So I'm just beating it all out as one assembly. I mean, easy, easy enough. So basically, the way that the way that sits in the housing like that is it's stacked like this. So if you were to pull the seal out first, you could then pull the cone out, and then beat the outer race out like I just did but instead what I did was the whole assembly just came out as one and on this outer race here on this cup you just put your punch down in here angle it each side back and forth and smack on this outer race back and forth until it works its way out that usually works pretty good. It'd be nice to have a parts washer and clean all this up real nice, but just have to goop it all out and spray it down and wipe it all out. You want to get all that old grease out of there. Putting nice new bearings in. You don't want old grease in mixed in there. You might have. Uh, you know, metal or other contaminants. So just get the, get the majority of it out with a dry rag. Uh, I still got the, uh, I still got the cup in the outer bearing here. I'll get that out. Show you how to do that. So what you have going on here is the cup or outer race of the outer bearing is still in here. Um, you know, here's the cone. It just it sits down in there like that. It's taper bearing. So to get this out, you need to flip it over. And tap this out if you or if you have like a race puller you might be able to do it that way but I just tap them out but you know if you flip this over and just set the face of this down on the table 
you're not going to be able to tap this all the way out. It's going to stop there because you're going to hit the table. So you need to have this free from anything, at least the width of this race. So what I like to do is just put it in a vise. Now you can take your punch and just get the uh, take your punch and you see right there is the lip of the cone. I'm sorry, the, the, right there is the lip of the cup. So you just take your punch. Put it on there and smack each side back and forth till it comes out. So you can tell right there I nicked up the bore there when I was hammering out the race. So you'll want to clean that up using, you know, some sandpaper or what I like to use is an air grinder with a flap wheel. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight. You see where the thrust of the bearing wore into the shoulder here, the bearing sh shoulder on the journal. That's, you don't want that. You don't want to leave it like that because there's metal shavings. See, I just got one off of there. See that? Metal shavings and bearings do not mix. So you want to clean all this up. And uh, I'll probably, probably use a file on this. No. Use a round file. All right, that feels pretty good. Don't feel any sharp edges anymore. And cleaned up that radius down in the bottom there and got all the loose loose shavings out of there and smoothed it out um, you know I running my hand around the journal here I do feel a little a few little nicks I might have got it with the, with the file so I'm take some emery cloth and lightly clean that up You don't want to put too much pressure on this. You don't want to take any material off. Um, you just want to smooth it out, clean it up a little bit. All right, that all feels pretty good. So these are easy lube axles, so they have a grease fitting in the end here. A grease fitting in the end here to lube the axles, to lube the bearings. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pump some fresh grease through this just to get all the old stuff out of the inside there. All right, so we pumped fresh grease through there. Um, got the stuff that was in there out. 
some new stuff's coming through. So I'm using a uh, red lithium high temp uh, wheel bearing grease. That's what I'm using there. Um, I bought a tube of it too to put in a grease gun, so I'll use this to pack the bearings. And I have that tube in the grease gun to to relube anytime it needs it. All right, so now that we got that all cleaned up, old grease out, we're gonna do the same to the other side, and then we'll be ready to start some assembly here. All right, so these are the new brake assemblies. Um, comes with everything. You just bolt them on. And I got auto adjust ones this time. So they work just like, you know, drum brakes on a vehicle with the auto adjust. Any slack that turns up in the cable pulls against the dealio here. And adjusts it so there are differences there's left hand and right hand so right here we have right hand right here we have left hand the way you measure your replacements is you measure the length Twelve inches and the width two inches. Twelve inches, two inches. So let's get these on. All right, we found these uh, U bolts are loose holding the axle to the spring. Uh, the lock washer is rusted out from underneath and they're seized on there. So we're just gonna cut them off and see if we can get some new U-bolts.
All right, so now that we got the uh, the drums and hub boards all cleaned up, deburred, we're ready to start assembly. Um, I got the cup and cones here. I got Timken bearings. You can get the part numbers off there if you need them. But uh, we'll put the cones in first here. Well, we'll assemble the big side here first. So we're gonna put the cup in. You always want the taper coming out towards the outside because if you put it in upside down, you're not gonna get the roller assembly in it. And sometimes it helps to put these in the freezer for a few hours, shrink it down just a little bit, but they're not super tight, so we'll just tap them in. And you'll wanna use a, you know, a brass or aluminum punch so you don't mar it up or nick it up at all. You can usually look down in there and make sure it's shouldered, but you can usually hear the difference when you're tapping it when it shoulders up. I need to get some brass shavings in there, so I'm going to clean that up. Next step is to uh, pack the bearings, and there's a bunch of different ways you can do this. Um, they're all messy, but this is, this is typically how I like to do it. Just put some in your palm of your hand. And just keep doing that until, you know, if you can see it's starting to come through there on the other side. All right, now that we have that bearing packed, we got our cup seated. Now we're going to put the cone or roller assembly down in there. Now it's time for the seal. That's probably the last wheel bearing job I do without buying a set of race oh, seaters. Yeah, those are nice. Just goes right over it and yeah. tap it down. Yeah, you guys have seen better days. You want me to clean that up? Yeah. I like to put just a skim coat of grease on this shaft seal surface. Let that seal slide over a little easier. Alright, 
right, so I was messing with the brake adjuster on this. Must have adjusted it out too far. So got to run that in. Just like it. Alright, so now you take your outer cone, put it in there. Take, put your washer in. And your keeper. And your nut. Nice grips. Just tighten her down. Till she's snug. Oh, see it started tightening down on the spindle a little bit, so I'll back that off just a hair. Is that screwdriver over there? Bend your keeper up. Need just a little bit more to get that keeper right. You need to hand me that ball peen. Nah, never mind. I don't need it. I'm good. And just like that. Clean these wheels up a little bit. One of my favorite attachments for an air grinder for cleaning. It's just a wire wheel. Well, not a wire wheel, but a wire brush.
So I'm just going to use a basic Krylon gloss black paint and primer. I don't get too carried away on trailer wheels because they're just going to rust again. Um, you know, maybe if I was starting with a new wheel, I would, you know, do a really good job sanding this down and um, prepping it and put a good primer down and all that business. But since these are already pitted and stuff like that, I'm not going to worry about it too much. I don't know how old this paint is either <laughs> for quite some time. Picked up a bunch of cans of it at Sherwin Williams many years ago for a project I had and I got a couple cans left so it's spraying fine so it must not be that bad. Uh, we're going to torque these to 100 foot pound. You want to go in a star pattern. It's good to go. Uh, brakes are a little weak in the rear axle, but they're just out of adjustment. They'll adjust they're, since I got them self adjusting. Um, you can do it manually, but they are working. So I'll um, put the new tires on the front axle um, just in case the rear ones want to wear out again, in case there's something else goofy going on. It'll wear the older set out. So, only thing left to do now is just to. Start towing with it, see what happens.
It's kind of like the black wheels. It's nice. 